all right so in this one i'm using a uh, docker and uh, i'm just going to go through how it all works so i have my docker file here and i'm going to use this to build uh, my docker image and i'm also going to to run the container all right uh, so um, you know to add docker i just had to add this docker file it has to be named this way and then instructions put here i'll be going through the instructions and everything but for now uh let me build uh, my docker image just to go through uh, if i execute my command uh, docker images um uh, these are long ago images so um this image is, is is i've not yet built an image i've built before and deleted them so that i could go through it again uh, so um and if I said docker uh, container ls you see there are no containers if I there are no running containers so if I try and display all the containers I can also see that the containers that exist are not recent they are for some time back uh, so we're going to build our image and then create a container as well all right okay so to build an image i will say um, docker build um, and i'll put the name of the image that i want to build but if i use this tag um, option i can um, uh, i can uh, name my image and also add a tag to it okay so i want to name it a uh, fed hr stroke um i want to name it uh, this way then i will add a tag latest okay and then um so this will be the name of my image and then with a tag uh, so I want to build it from a docker file okay so where do I find that docker file the docker file is in this directory in the current directory so I use a dot so if I execute that So the image has been built. So if I say Docker images, so my Docker image is here, built seven seconds ago. All right. So our, we have built, what we've just done is we have built a Docker image from a Docker file. So a file is basically a set of instructions that tell how our image is going to be built. Okay, we will go through this more in detail. Uh, but so far, we've been able to build our image. Now, our, with our image, we can now create a container. And a container is basically a running, inst it's an instance of an image okay so um how do we uh create a container now there are commands for container uh so if i try to look into them uh, you know i can create a new container by using a uh, docker container create or i can also um use if I want to create a container and run it at the same time, I can say docker container run, um, and that will help me to run, uh, to create and run a container. Then if I have an existing container, I can just start it. 
uh, I can stop it or anything like that. Yeah. But for now, I do not have an existing container. And I can check that by doing docker ps. Uh, this checks for um, a running container. Or I can use docker container ls. Okay. So our com these commands can be categorized. So um, into you know uh, docker container commands or docker image commands. So I can do this um, by either using docker ps, which is none. It is not categorized. But if I say docker container ls this is very clear that I'm, you know, executing a Docker container command. So let's create, um, let's run, create and run. So I'll use Docker, uh, I can say Docker run, or I can say Docker container run. And I want to run, um, uh, I want to run this in, in a detached mode, okay? Uh, basically, we can even see uh, those options. So if I want to run it in a detached mode, uh, you know, or background mode, that is minus D. And if I want to supply like a port, okay, uh, that is um, uh, I supply minus P, you know. So uh, remember we already have this command that tells like once our container is put together this command will be executed yeah so um let me now uh let me run so docker container run um so i want to run it in a touched mode and um or background mode and i want to supply my port so i basically want um my host Port 8000 to be mapped to port 9000 of the of the container and I already made it that once the container once the image is run once the image is created this command should be run basically it runs the server so this is what I want to do and I put now the name of the image that I want to that I want to uh, create the container from. So uh, let me just split this terminal. So I will say Docker images. So uh, this is the image I'm interested in. Okay. So um, this is the command. Run docker container run will create and run the uh, container so that's what the command run does according to the documentation and there's d minus d runs it in a background mode and p helps us to map the port uh, to map the port of our host to our host is our current local machine, which I'm on right now. So 8,000 is mapped to 9,000, or I can map it to any port that I'm interested in within the container. And then this is the image name uh, from which I am, you know, creating and running my container. So let's execute this and see. Perfect. So it has run. So if for us to confirm that i can say docker ps and again i can also say docker container ls these two commands basically mean the same thing all right but the docker container ls makes it clear that i'm executing uh, a command on the container uh, so uh, by default when i run docker ps or docker container ls are uh, it shows me the you know it shows me the running container and are uh, what we notice here is that we have a container id uh, we have an image name from you know which this container has created we have the command that was you know run within the container sorry within the image uh, which is basically this one then we have the time you can know 
when was this container created and we can see the status so the status already shows like is it up or is it exited or something like that yeah uh, so we can see the ports 8000 on our machine is mapped to 9000 on the container yeah and this is the name of the container so we did not supply the name of the container while creating um while creating the 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 container but we can also supply the name if we like yeah our uh, but for now let's use this so our uh, uh, since now our container is up, let's test and see if it is up, if it is running well. Uh, so if I say local 8000, boom. This is our, this is it, and we can see the output, okay, running pretty well. Okay, so my my app is uh, mainly using uh, you know an SQLite database, so that's why um, I'm not connecting to some external database or anything like that. But this actually shows that um, uh, things are working well. So are uh, just something are uh, are. Uh, for us to see uh, that the server is running well uh, on the image or on the container, uh, if I say uh, docker uh, container logs, uh, this allows me to see the logs uh, on the container, and then I supply the container name or the container ID, which is basically I can put the container ID. So this shows what is happening on the terminal of my container and as you can see we have the server running on port 9000 and um and yeah that's it so i can stop so th that's it works pretty well so let me now see how to stop this container uh, so i can say uh, docker uh, container stop and then i put the container id or the container name um, i can even use the container name this that was created for us randomly boom now since i've stopped it so if i say docker ps we do not have a running container but if i say docker ps minus a which stands for all i can see that i have this container existing but it is it is exited so if i come back here and i try to run my thing boom <laughs> there's nothing okay so how do i like delete this container or delete the image i created so i can say docker uh, container uh, all right so let me first try to delete the image docker images so docker image remove uh, so if I try to delete this image, see what happens, boom. So I get an error saying unable to remove this um, uh, because the container, container of this ID is using its referenced image, yeah? So what does this show me is that if I want to delete a container, I have to first, if I want to delete an image, I have to first delete the container, yeah? So uh, let me first delete the container, docker p container, uh, remove. So uh, where is my container ID? Boom. So I put that. So if I say docker ps minus a, as you can see, my container is gone. So now, if I want to delete the image, docker uh, image, um, remove. 
so now at this point let me try deleting this image and then see uh, so I've successfully deleted my image so if I say docker images uh, there's nothing if I say docker uh, these were already there so my latest image is gone docker ps uh, ps minus a well i don't have a container as well so r uh, this is it uh, so if i'm um, to go through a bit to give uh, more insight uh, uh let's go through some definitions um so what is docker okay what is docker so docker is an open platform for developing shipping and running applications this is according this is definition given by docker itself and what basically what docker does is basically it enables you to separate your applications from your infrastructure so you can deliver software quickly so our you know in the old days, what people used to do if they wanted to up deploy applications, they would basically spin up a new server. <laughs> Maybe like some companies would have like their own servers. So basically install an operating system and then do the configuration and then set up the machine to actually run the application. Yeah. Now that worked well, but came with challenges. So if you have uh, let's say more than one servers or even if you are using one server are uh, and you need to make any updates or the, the operating system crashes for some reason you have to like uh set up afresh and then you know sometimes you could have forgotten your configuration if the application is huge and then it would even become worse if if, if like the it guy who set it up left and then you have a new guy and then doesn't know the configuration there's no proper documentation it could all be messy yeah and then you know the next era was you know for virtual machines where you can you know spin up virtual machines using vmware but these still work as you know normal computers or normal servers you still have to install an operating system then configure and all that so there is a lot of work in setting up and, and configuring and uh things if you know something occurs then it means that one has to you know go through make updates manually on the server or you know update the config if you know there are lots of issues that could go wrong with that kind of approach and especially if if for example you you wanted someone else to you wanted to use another server for example uh, and move away from your current server it means you have to like set up the config on the new server and then set up the application you know the same way as you are doing on the old server which is uh, pretty much daunting but now with if you are using docker i could you know you could just take your docker image and then are uh, that would be it you could take your docker image and run it on you know if if you have a new pc a new server you could take your docker image and run it on the new server and it would just work very well as it worked on the previous server so there is like little to no configuration that one needs to do you actually don't need to do any configuration in that case you would just need to let's say update your docker image if, if there are new updates you need to make and then you'd run it on the new server you know so uh that's kind of uh what this means that it you separate you're able to separate your application from your infrastructure uh, so uh i don't have to be running uh my application directly on the hardware or this pc I just need to be running it on my image uh, it just need to be like i just need to have an image and then i can use another pc very easily yeah if i wanted yeah so uh that's what docker is mainly and then a docker file is basically a text document that contains all the commands a user can call you know uh 
to assemble an image so in our case a docker file looks like this so this is our docker file all right and i'll go through each of these one by one but this is our docker file so i could one could actually run these commands independently let's say on the terminal or something like that uh, but when you put them in a file it becomes easy to you know have all the commands in one file and then you know uh, build at once yeah so this is what a docker file is basically yeah and so what is an image so an image is a read only template with instructions for creating a docker container so are uh, from a, once we have a docker file like this from this file we are able to build an image and basically an image is read only because our uh, we don't want to be modifying the image we can only build a new image but we don't modify uh, the image i think this is what makes them unique as they are read only and so it means that once you build your image you're sure that it's not going to change its state is not going to change it's going to be that and if you wanted to change it you could build a new version you know of an image and you're sure that the state of that image will not change so that's why it is you know read only um and and it's from that image that we can uh, build uh, we can run our container so and so what's a container a container is simply a runnable instance of an image so once we build an image from a docker file we build an image and once we have that image we can run a container based off that image so um, a container is a runnable instance of an image you can run a, it can be in a running state it could be in a stopped state but it's a runnable instance yeah of an image that's that's what it is basically so these are the terms we basically need to understand to work with docker properly uh, there are of course other terms uh, but uh, these initially help us to know what docker is all about and you know if we try to look at the architecture briefly um, we are told that docker uses a client server architecture and uh, we have a docker client that basically talks to the docker daemon yeah so um, it's the docker we are, you know we told that the docker daemon does the heavy lifting of like running you know distributing the docker containers so the thing is once we like create uh, when we when we executed our command uh, docker you know build um uh, you know tag uh then the image name you know uh, fed hr you know uh that uh if i remember the command once we executed once we executed this image what happens is that um this we are executing it using a client and this is going to be run on the server through a rest api so if we go ahead we see that we are told that docker client and docker daemon can run on the same machine or the same system or they can you can have you know a, a, you can connect a docker client a remote docker daemon so uh, in my instance in my case the docker daemon and the docker client are all on this machine but i could for example have a docker client using uh, connecting to a remote docker daemon so um our uh, we will see later that docker represents our client and docker d uh, basically our uh, uh, let me type it here so docker is our client and docker d is our daemon and we have another client called docker compose which allows us to 
you know to manage uh, several containers uh, so the docker client and the docker daemon communicate using a rest api over unix sockets or a network interface yeah so uh, like i said uh, in my case the docker daemon and the docker client are all one on one machine but they could be on different they could exist on different machines and communicate over a network yeah a docker another docker client is docker compose that lets you work with um, applications consisting of a set of containers so once we think of a docker client we think of docker this is a docker client that we exec that we use through the terminal and then we have a uh, docker sorry docker compose I'll, I'll have another you know video about this one and then docker d is our daemon it's like the, the docker server basically uh, where um where all the all the magic takes place and we communicate to this server using rest api yeah are uh, so for example the rest endpoint would be something like containers uh, containers create or containers uh, you know id you know are uh, something like <laughs> delete i haven't looked at the endpoints but i would assume such endpoints are being called by the client yeah so this is what we see here is that uh, on this diagram what we see is that the client has uh, you know commands we you know we we you know has commands like docker build docker pull uh you know which allows you to pull uh an image uh, from a remote repository uh, or docker run so all these commands that we execute on the client are basically run against the docker daemon through a rest api so our uh, the docker host or so this the docker host would be in this case is my machine or could be remote uh, so the docker host will have the docker daemon okay and in this case my pc has the docker daemon and that docker daemon you know when we create containers and images they are all you know the process of creating and you know as uh, uh, storing all that uh, is done by the the docker daemon yeah and we have another element called the registry and the registry is basically like where we push is like our repository for for docker images so uh, once i let's say uh, create an image like i did previously if i want that image to be accessed by other people i could uh, you know push it to the registry and then people could you know have access to it if i make it public yeah so our uh, i already already you know i already explained the terms docker daemon uh so basically uh this is i extracted this from the documentation and so briefly uh docker daemon listens for docker api requests and manages docker objects such as images containers networks and volumes yeah uh, a daemon can also communicate with other daemons to manage docker uh, services so that's what a docker daemon is and a docker client uh, basically what we you know looked at as docker is the primary way many docker users interact with docker uh, so means that there could be other ways that one could interact with docker daemon maybe um i'm just thinking of it i if i have if one has access to the docker daemon api <laughs> one could actually write an application that you know sends the commands <laughs> uh, and then you could actually create you know maybe images or containers you know uh, you know through code you know if you wanted uh, but here we are told that you know many users primarily uh, interact with docker through uh, uh, using this client so when you run commands such as docker run you know or other commands the client sends these commands to docker daemon uh, which carries them out yeah so hope that's clear uh, and 
we also have docker desktop and docker desktop initially was created for it, it's an installable application that runs on like mac windows and recently uh, one was created for also uh, linux uh, but uh, you know it enables you to build and share containerized application and microservices i haven't used this a lot uh, i haven't actually used it i just like installed it but haven't basically interacted with it uh, on my machine it is um, uh, I just have it on another screen, but that's okay. Uh, so I installed it, but I haven't interacted with it. But uh, mainly we are told that it includes the Docker daemon. It has its own daemon. It has its, uh, you know, it's a, it has a client, you know, Docker Compose and Docker Content Trust and, and Kubernetes. I, I haven't interacted with it, but, you know, like the doc, the docs say that it has, you know, all these things. You can use it for all these things, yeah. Uh, so the registry, you know, stores the Docker images, and the default one is Docker Hub, yeah. Docker Hub, yeah. Docker Hub, yeah. So this is the default registry. Um, yeah. So uh, if I try to explore, so. There are, you know, very many images. For example, this is the Ubuntu one, yeah, with over 10 billion downloads, yeah. you know, or oh, 1 billion downloads, yeah. So our, that's, this is a Docker Hub. So if I created my own image, I could actually push it at this repository if I wanted, yeah. Yeah. So our, also when someone talks about Docker objects, what do they mean? So when you use Docker, you are creating and using, you know, images, containers, networks, volumes, plugins. So all these are objects, yeah. So, you know, all these are what we term as Docker objects. So uh, how do we install Docker? I won't really go through how we install Docker, but this is the link and it's already opened here. Uh, there are several ways to, you know, to install Docker. Um, you know, this is for Docker desktop, uh, um, in my case, you know, depending on the operating system, one could choose, you know, uh, whichever, but in my case, I'm using this, I'm using Ubuntu. So I just had to come here and, and basically, uh, follow the, you know, the installation procedure. Yeah. So that's it about installation. And then Docker file instructions. So uh, basically, if we look at these instructions, um, from, you know, allows us to, to refer to the best image we'd like to use. So basically, uh, the beauty with images is that, uh, you know, Again, if I had to, if I was not using Docker and I had to like use a new server, I would have to manually go and install an operating system and then install, configure my application and all that. But now we can get an image that, for example, already has Linux setup and or Python setup. So I want to use an image that already has Python 3.7 buster so i if i go to docker hub um of course docker hub is the default uh um, is the default repository for our images so if i say python are uh, there are already existing images for python so uh so i'm using the one 3.7 uh buster so um basically using um okay so let's see um so i'm basically using this image so if i click it so what we see is that this already uh this image is already built from um 
these docker you know docker instructions these instructions so are uh, if we see here uh, it's also built from some other you know image so are uh, this already like installs uh, python um, and every other thing i need about python 3 yeah so our uh, i don't have to like put instructions for installing python and all that because this image already did it for me yeah so all i have to do is to just add on to this image what i really want and i basically want to install the application and install my application dependencies yeah so our uh, for every image we create we have like a base image yeah that we that we refer to or that we that we use to make our work easier and then our uh, this command so that is the from command and we can you know see the docs i linked uh, the docs uh, and how to use it uh, so um we are the documentation tells us that from instruction initializes a new build stage and sets the base image for subsequent instructions so that's basically what we are doing uh, so let me first go through these ones um, that i have in my file so the environment uh the env uh, instruction it helps us set environmental variables so uh, for example this particular instruction you know environmental variable prevents python from you know copying pyc files to the container now one could there could be a number of or couple of environmental variables or other environmental variables that one might want to set and this env um, allows us to do that uh, for example this other one allows us to you know ensures that python output is logged to the terminal uh, making it possible to monitor Django logs in real time. Yeah. So, you know, previously, so that we're able to see the logs. So, uh, this made it possible. Uh, so, that's it about the env. Uh, then we have the work dir, dir, or setting, it helps us to set the working directory um, in our container. Uh, so, uh, when we finally uh build our image uh this will be set as the working directory within the container that we you know that we create from that image so it means that everything that we have here i want to have it in this folder yeah that is uh, basically what it is yeah uh, and then copy allows us to copy files from our current working folder on our you know host um, on our host machine which is this machine i'm using we copy those files to the container working directory so in our case we are copying the requirements file to the container working directory yeah and then our uh, run allows us to to run uh like commands you know that we want uh, so if i'm to go here and check the docs um so our uh, the run instruction will execute any commands in a new layer on top of the current image and commit the results so when we say run pip install so it will run this command yeah but on the terminal is it like runs it on the terminal within our working directory so within our working directory on that terminal are uh, it will execute this so this allows us to basically install um, all our requirements yeah and then what we are doing now here is that we are copying all the files in our current uh, project to uh, the container working directory this is basically what it is then expose allows us to um, you know 
to define the port within the container that we want to expose. So uh, we are exposing port 900 uh, and that port, the container will be listening on that port at runtime. So this port now will be open or we have exposed it when the container is up and means that it will be listening for any incoming uh, connections, yeah? And then this CMD allows us to execute once we have compiled, once we have built our image, what command we want to run by default. So immediately we build our image, this command is run. And what we are basically doing, we are running Python manage py server. So we basically running our project here. Yeah? So you can run any command here as well. So our there are these other commands that I won't really go into, but there are just quite a few of them. So one would just need to understand these commands and uh, refer to the documentation uh, if there is anything needed. Uh, you know, th these commands are basically for, you know, act as instructions that we use in our Docker file. And now, the other commands would be commands that help us interact or manage our images and containers. And these commands, even if I don't go too much into detail, um, I can have them categorized in um, commands that help us, uh, you know, interact or manage the container and then commands that help us interact or manage, interact with or manage the image. Uh, so images, so if I say a Docker container, so this manages containers and then uh, Docker images, Docker image, this manages the images. So for example, if I'm to go to, so you realize that most of the commands here like uh, Docker config, uh, manage docker configs or docker create create a new container or docker exec run a command in a running container most of them are if not all of them are or is either linked to an image or a container so uh, it means i can come here in docker uh, image and then see the commands that i need to know to build I mean, need to know to manage my images. Uh, and then the ones for container, I can come here now, know what I need, to, the con commands I need to, um, to, to to manage my container, yeah? So uh, basically, uh, that's it. Uh, that's it, basically. So uh, again, uh, so I'm able to see my image. So let's create the image uh, one more time. So uh, Docker, now I will use, um, so if, if I'm to create, to build an image uh, from uh, this Docker file. Uh, now, one thing that I tend to use is when I say, when I'm going to execute the command, in order for me to remember the commands, I ask myself, is this a command for a container or an image? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build an image from a Docker file. So I could say Docker build because that command is here, Docker build. It's here, I can build an image from a Docker file. But I can also use a Docker image build, which basically does the same thing. But this kind of categorization helps me um, know that quickly realize the command. So I can say Docker image build, uh, build, and then I can provide the tag. And of course, if I don't know what I'm supposed to do next, I can say help. And um, I can now go ahead, for example, I see name and optionally, uh, you know, add a tag. So uh, I can now, this says I just supply dash dash T. 
so I can just say dash dash tag and um, the name I want is uh, let's say fed HR as the name and uh, the tag let's say latest okay um, and I'm building this from which docker file so the docker file will be found uh, automatically in this once I provide the dot it means it will be found in this current directory where I am where I am and it will be identified because uh, the docker file has a standard naming so if I do that all right that's cool so if I wanted to see my images I said docker images and I can see my image is here, the tag is here, and this was created second, seconds ago. So if I want to remove the image, I can say docker image, remove, then I can supply the image name, fedhr, perfect. Uh, so let's see if there are any other docker image commands that we need, uh, docker image history, let's say docker image history, Oh, okay. I think with that I'm supposed to have. Uh, let me create. Let me see Docker images. Oh, I deleted the other one, so let me try to create it again. Boom. So, um, okay. Getting it. So, it's a Docker image history. Um, then the doc, the the Docker the image name. Boom. So I'm able to see the image history um, for this particular image. All right, yeah. So um, there are other, you know, there are other. So if I want to list images, I can also so Docker image instead of, instead of Docker images, I can say Docker image ls. Uh, what you know, this list the images. Um, Docker image pull and push. Uh, this for pushing uh, the image into the repository. Um, so if I say Docker image push, um, fed HR. Whoa. I try to push, but um, access denied. I guess I would probably need to like, uh, you know, create an account then provide like credentials and all that. Uh, but pull will pull it from the repo and then remove will allow us to remove and then yeah. So basically, um, image tag create a tag name that refers to image. So so basically these are the commands we can execute. So if I say Docker image, Docker image ls. So I have my image. So uh, for the for the container, uh, see if I'm to go back to the base. So Docker image. Okay, Docker container. Let me go to the container. So I want to create uh, an image from a container. This time I don't want to create and run. Let me say, uh, okay, let me first create create and run. So uh, let me use docker um, container run, run. Okay, so uh, we see that uh, uh, these are the different options we can supply. Okay, so I will say uh, docker container I could say docker run blah blah but I'm going to say docker container uh, run uh, so what am I running so again if I'm not sure of what comes next I can uh, just ask for help and I see that uh, I need to run it in detached mode uh, background and I want to supply a port or whatever other options uh, so um, so I'm going to supply 
8,000. I want that to connect to, to, ma to be mapped to 9,000 on my image. And then I could actually also supply a, a name. Uh, hmm. There should be an option for supplying a name. Boom. So I can supply a name for the container. So um, so a name I want to call it Fed HR container uh, container one. Let me just <laughs> do that. Uh, so um so that's the name of the container then uh port mapping uh but i from which image do i want to run this uh, from which image am i creating this container i'm creating it from image from this image yeah so um boom that's it so if i docker ps which is the same as docker again if i try to to list containers i can say docker the same thing list containers non running container containers that are currently running so like uh, this lists the containers that are currently running so it's the same as ls these two commands are the same but this is more like specific like i'm running it you know it's a container command but basically does the same thing so we can see this is uh, running so if I go and say uh, 8,000 boom it runs well if I say admin boom runs well perfect so um, what else uh, let me see what other commands I could run uh cp for copying files create all right so let's uh kill logs so i can set docker container logs and, and what we see now is that this container has a name uh because if we don't supply a name it can create a random one just like we saw earlier so uh, container logs now i can save hr container one so I'm able to see logs for that. Yeah, I'm able to see logs. Um, what else? Mm. So I can remove container. I can, you know, I can stop the container. Docker container stop. HR container one. So if I now do container ls nothing shows but i can you know container the other options if i want to see the ones that are not running i can i can supply minus a and see all and again if i didn't know that i can check it here and i see that this will give me show all containers um, because the default one just shows the ones that are are running so this will show me everything even the ones that are not running so since i stopped it uh the container we can now see that this was exited and if i try to access my thing here it's nowhere it's gone yeah all right uh so uh if i wanted i could now uh docker container remove so which basically removes you know and I just supply the container name. Um, the container name is fed HR. Where's the containers? Oh, this is the container name. Ah. All right, so if I say docker container ls minus a, boom, now the container does not exist anymore. So let's see how we can create a container without uh, you know without using co container run so I want to just create a container that does not run remember the run command creates this one it creates and runs at the same time like if we check the doc here 
docker run docker run so we are told that the docker run command first creates a writable container layer over the specified image and then starts it using the specified command so docker command does both yeah so but now i want to use um the docker create docker create so i can say docker create or i can say docker container uh, create so docker container create so i would say docker container container create i don't know what to supply so i ask for help um what can i uh publish you know the containers port to the host so i can still do that um there is no detached mode because we are not running the container so i can say docker container uh creates um then i can supply but i want eight I want to put 8,000 on my host, which is this computer, to be mapped to 9,000 on the on the on the container, yeah. And uh, I need supply, so I've supplied the option. So basically, options come first. So I've done that. Supply the image name, so which is um, uh, my image name is FedHR. That if I'm that's the image we created earlier so uh let's see wow. that creates a container but actually does not run it so if i say docker ps which is the same as docker container ls we don't have any running containers but if i say docker container docker ps minus a i can see that i have an image i have a, I have a, an, a container that was created and it has um, basically has a random name since we didn't supply a name. So let me start this container. So I can actually start. So this is what usually uh, the doc, docker run command is doing for us. It creates and then runs. But now we first created and now you're going to run it sorry start it so uh start so this all right uh so docker container start so which container are we starting again all right so that um so i can now use the name of the container or even the container id if i like let me use the i can whatever uh pascal all right so let's see what that gives us hmm, that run so if i say docker ps container ls Mm, shows that our container is running so if i come back here and now try to it basically runs quite well all right so this was it about docker and uh let me see if there is anything i didn't talk we talked about the docker instructions uh, building a docker image running the container categorized commands uh, um different different difference between the docker run and the docker start uh, basically docker run like we see it creates and starts then the docker start will just start an already existing image sorry container so this is it about docker and how i was able to you know add it to my project and um and now our my project is going to be uh you know um using uh docker yeah 
So thank you so much. And next time I will try to talk more about Docker Compose and expound on it. Bye.